We're about to go into some adjustments of tracking and kerning, and I'll talk a little bit about those. But keep in mind, typography is an entire field of art, and unfortunately, we don't have time to uh, delve deeply into typography. And additionally, I wouldn't say that I have the expertise to uh, really teach a class in typography as it is. However, there are courses in typography and there are thousands of videos of it on YouTube. Uh, I'd highly recommend investigating it if you're the least bit interested in um, fonts. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing field of study and uh, it's well worth your time uh, looking into it. Uh, now, if you are interested in learning anything about typography, really, uh, I would recommend the new typography. This was done in 1928 and it covers basically how to make something look modern and the work that they did in this book uh, paved the way for designs and fonts and layouts that we still use to this day when we need something to look modern. It's amazing to me that this could be done and that it has aged so spectacularly well. At the time of this recording, it's uh, around 90 years old. So I recommend taking a look at it. Uh, there are many different copies. It's frequently reprinted. Uh, I believe it's available online. If you look hard enough, you'll find free copies of it around and about. Um, it's, it's worth reading. Uh, it's worth under beginning to understand these now that said let's go ahead and touch a bit on uh, what we can do inside of Photoshop using the character panel so again when you have the type tool active you can quickly get both the character and paragraph panel uh, to show or to hide by clicking on this icon here it toggles the character and paragraph panels they're so important that they work together and so they'll show up thusly now if you don't have the type tool active and you just need to have this show you can always go to window and you have paragraph you also have character so those are always available to you now let's go back to the quick tall fox and uh, take a look at what we have available to us now I'm going to highlight just a bit of it and you can see that we have uh, a few things. We can adjust the vertical scale of text and now this is truly tall and we can uh, adjust the horizontal scale as well and so it's lazy so it's lying very flat uh, and it's similar to adjusting the font size but not quite the same. For example uh, the word the if we were to decrease the font size it would uniformly shrink down. Now that said, we have a few more adjustments. We have uh, the leading, we have the tracking, and we have the kerning. We also have uh, the baseline shift. Now the baseline shift is interesting. Uh, let's grab the word jumps here. Baseline shift will increase it over the standard baseline. Notice that this baseline is now higher than that one. Now, uh, a lot of people don't think it really does anything because they'll just click in the text rather than highlighting a small section of it and or highlight the entire piece, depending on the version of Photoshop. Then when they increase or decrease the baseline shift, it will do all of it or uh, none of it, depending on what you're doing. So it won't look as though it had an effect. But if you uh, simply highlight one word, you'll be able to shift it up or down uh, inside of whatever you're working on. So uh, keep in mind that you do have the baseline shift available. Now tracking is the overall space between letters. So for example, if we selected our tall here and we went to our tracking uh, right over here and increase that, you'd see how the spacing increases across everything. Now this is important. Uh, we'll get into justified layout later, but um, uh, there, there are ways to essentially automate this uh, across the entire uh, piece across everything that you're doing. Let me get the, uh, I'm just going to move that over a little bit with the move tool and then move back to my type tool uh, so we can go over. Now we've also got the uh, kerning, which is the space between individual letters. So let me click between this Q and the U and I will go over to our kerning and uh, I'm just dragging, but you can see how these two letters are getting closer and closer together and we can actually smoosh them and if we so wanted, we're going very negative. We can overlap things if we so desired. Now, what's uh, interesting to me, oops, I've, I've clicked off. Now, it's a little tricky to tell where you are, so I'm just going to use the arrow key to move one over. So be a little careful uh, with, uh, with kerning. Uh, you can see that I, in fact, missed. There we go. 
uh, where it is, I also got confused, as did the computer. All right, so that's kerning. Now, uh, keep in mind, let's uh, take a look at something that uh, I have not adjusted. Uh, let's look at, for example, hmm, be better if we had another font. Just a moment. Whoops. I'll control click with the move tool to select the layer since I don't have auto select on. Holding down control, uh, that's command on the Macintosh, will temporarily turn on auto select. Holding down the alt key while holding down control will give me the option of duplicating my work. So I can get it over there. Double click to highlight everything. And let's pick a different font for just a moment so we can see a little bit better. And I believe we're going to, oh, the, the Y kind of does it. Well, let's, let's look for one more so I can demonstrate how these overlap. What we really need is something with some serifs, those little spinning bits. Actually, here we go. The Q right here should work quite nicely. Let me zoom in. So notice something about this, uh, despite, besides the fact that strong isn't really cutting it because it's small. So we might change it to sharp, for example, to get that looking a little better. Notice that uh, as this eye bar flashes on and off, uh, we have the Q actually going past and under the U just a little bit. Now, this is a trick of uh, typography. Sometimes you'll want letters to actually cross over uh, other ones for so that the words will look better connected. Notice this W and this O, we can put them over. Now this also will make it look more crowded, so do watch out when you use it. It can make it more difficult to read depending on who you're showing it to. And that overlap is actually what's called kerning. Let's go to our friend the Wikipedia, which has a great little example. With no kerning, you can see that there's no overlap. But with kerning, you can see that there's an overlap to it, and it makes sense. This is, uh, if you had these as little stamps and you pushed these down one at a time, then voila, uh, you would end up with this spacing, and they'd look too spaced, too far apart. So what you could do instead is produce one little stamp that has, an, like, for example, this A and V together so that they can overlap. And then you could stamp them down by stamp. I mean, you know, you've, you've had stamps, little squares that you can uh, carve something into and go chunk and boom, you know, grab some ink and slam it down. You've probably done it with potatoes. I swear you've seen potato stamps, right? You know, you carve. You carve a stamp and you stamp something in it and voila, that's that's it. That's what I mean by stamps. If on this potato you carved two potatoes, one for the letter A and one for the letter V, you held them together and you stamped them down, then there would be this space. But if instead on a single potato you carved an A and a V together and slammed it down, then you'd get this kerning. Well, in Photoshop you don't have to carve potatoes to do any of this. You can simply come in and you can do an adjustment to the kerning, and you can do it on individual letters. Now that said, some fonts will account for that uh, immediately, and some fonts won't. So you want to keep this in mind when you're doing layout. You may want to do slight adjustments to things so that you can get a better read on them, applying your own kerning as you go through. So just keep that in mind. There we go. Now this O is better connected with the fox. However, for some people, it may be more difficult to read. So keep that in mind too. Let me click oh click off of that i suppose and uh, let's talk about letting so by default this one right here should be the letting let me make sure i've got that correct yes yeah, set the letting so by default it will be auto and what that's referring to is that the font's size in this case uh well, it looks like uh what what do we have here 34 point uh 78 points uh, and remember 72 points per inch um it's auto means that it will be controlled by whatever the point size is. So as we increase or decrease it, the letting will increase or decrease. Letting is the space between lines. As we have a two, uh, a 12 point space as compared to a one inch space here, 72, 
uh, you can see immediately what it is. And so let's uh, fr head over to our friend Google for just a moment. Uh, and you can see that they have this great description. It's a term that describes the distance between each line of text. It's pronounced letting. The name comes from when typesetting was done by hand and pieces of lead were used to separate the lines. So be careful, you'll get lead poisoning. But uh, truthfully, many, many of the uh, terms for typography and descriptions of fonts have to do with an old printing press back when they would take a grid put down the little metal stamps of the text uh, or wooden depending on uh, how expensive it is and then once they've typeset it like they've literally set it in they'll lock it in place and then they'd press it down and voila the printing press would produce uh, text so all of the terms that they have from back then like letting for example have held over to modern typography so uh, one of the what many wonderful things about typography is as you learn the terms they're not just made up words they're actual descriptions of historical techniques that were used to produce the, the printed word uh, again typography to me is absolutely amazing it's always something fun to read and learn about uh, but uh, again, uh, this this class isn't going to get into into that. I just want to show you the controls that you have available within Photoshop. Now that covers a lot of what the character uh, panel has. So let's go ahead and look at the last few bits and pieces. We have the font itself, and notice that as we adjust it, it is just adjusting the one area. Uh, if we clicked off and onto something else, notice that it's not changing the overall font like it would if we uh, uh, had a text box, sorry, a type a text box, here we go, a text box and adjusted the uh, font up here. In older versions of Photoshop, it would change the overall style. Uh, apparently on modern versions, it will not. So keep a heads up on that. If you're on an older version of Photoshop and you make a little change on here, all of a sudden everything would shift. Don't worry about that. That's supposed to happen. On modern versions of Photoshop, you actually have to select it, which actually I think is quite nice. So it'll tell you uh, what you have for your font. Oh, that was a, a pretty one. There we go. Uh, what you have for your font. And then it will also have, uh, if it can, have different types. It should have them up there. And you can see that uh, this particular font does not have uh, anything beyond bold. And in fact, it doesn't even have uh, normal, for example. So that will bring us down to, uh, again, our faux uh, systems. Photoshop can create a faux bold, a faux italic, a faux, a faux all cap, a faux, and that's just everything capitalized, a faux small cap, and I like this one a lot, where it capitalizes things and then shrinks down everything past the first letter. Let me highlight one. A uh, faux superscript, and this, oh, well, uh, the superscript, you'll see this in mathematics a lot. It's uh, when you start having uh, something to the something to power, that's where it is inside of Photoshop. But you also have a subscript where it will come down uh, on it. So you can have all kinds of fun uh, right there uh, with, <laughs> with a font uh, that's that's quite enjoyable. Uh, you have an underline that Photoshop will uh, produce, which gets very interesting if you uh, cut across. You also have a uh, strike through, uh, which will cut through it. That's impossible to see. It's so small. Let me go ahead and highlight this V and do a strike through. You can see that line cutting. And again, if you ever reach a point where you can't see what's going on, Control H will hide your highlight, which will allow you to uh, see the what you're working on as you uh, go through it and do adjustments. So it's important to note that as we did all of these adjustments throughout the text, uh, for example, if we set this to italics, because Photoshop is generating this itself, it does not change the uh, style type that you have up here uh, going on. Um, that this is uh, this is uh, re remains the same because Photoshop's generating this. And also, Photoshop can't generate everything; it can generate most things. Notice as I click from one font, what we have available down here, and we're going to get to that, changes as compared to another font. What's available uh, will be different depending on the fonts. Uh, and so let's explore what these do uh, inside of uh, inside of Photoshop. Since this is essentially the last of the character panel, there are some flyout options, but you'll see that they're essentially, uh, with the exception of reset and no break, the same that we're doing here. So no break forces it not to uh, not to break. Uh, we also have 
reset character. So if we wanted to go back to the way it was, you highlight and then you fly out and you reset character and that should bring it back to the original, which is blacks and a very small size so we can't actually see it. If I changed it to white, you can see how tiny that B is. It's minuscule, so I'm just going to undo that. A couple, oh, I've got the, there we go, undo that. Had to leave the text box in order to step back in history. All right, so the question is, what are all these buttons way at the bottom? And let's uh, let's explore those. These are referred to as lig ligatures. Almost said that wrong. A ligature is the combination of two letters. I've been told by people who are experts in uh, typography. Well, I've gone through online courses with people who are experts in typography, and they have stated that not all of these are true ligatures. Ligatures. Almost said it wrong again. Uh, but they all do affect them like a ligature would. So a con the idea of a ligature is that it's a combination of two characters when they come together. So supposedly uh, we have that happening here, but the font means that it's uh, it's nearly impossible to see. So let's go ahead and switch over to, ah, here we go. Supposedly it will connect to them. Now in this case, we're not going to see it because the kerning between the two are too far apart. So let's uh, let's do the classic ligature. Notice that it says it has an F and an I. Well, let's actually create that so that we can see it. It's lowercase f, uppercase i, and you can see how they're connected together. I'm going to do control T with the move tool, and that will let us expand it so that it's actually visible. Press return on the numerical pad to uh, leave, Z on the keyboard to zoom. So this looks like a weird H, right? But we know it's actually an F and an I. So what if we wanted it to look more like an F and an I? Well, we turn off our ligature, our standard ligature, and it would break them apart. And now you can see that they are, in fact, an F and an I. So some fonts will have that by default going in. And keep that in mind. If you end up with uh, seemingly strange text occurring, it may be that a ligature has occurred. Now, that's not the uh, only type of ligature. We also have uh, ordinals, such as first and second and third. And we have fractions. Let's go ahead and type out a couple of those. I believe this one will support it. So if we go first, this would be an appropriate time to use the ordinal. I believe it's smart enough I can highlight all of it. Ah, sadly, it is not smart enough that I can highlight all of it. In fact, <laughs> it should have done that, but apparently this font is resistant to it. Uh, so the idea is that uh, had I selected a... Uh, oh, I'm back in Mirrored Pro. I didn't even realize. Uh, I think the I, I have tested these, but as I've uh, gone on for the last uh, hour, I've certainly lost track of where I was. Let's see... Let's do first. Ah, but this one won't. However, this one should support the fraction, which indeed it does. The uh, fraction ligature, which I believe they simply call fractions, will uh, convert it to the standard type of fraction without having to do things like adjust the kerning and superscript and subscript and all that good work. Uh, and again, the... Uh, uh, this ligature, the ordinal ligature. Uh, sh let's try one more font, uh, but we've got uh, Merited Pro again. Let me just do this. We will uh, switch this out of being superscript, and we will turn on our ordinal, and we'll just paw through. There it is. There is one that supports it, Corbel. So without our ordinal, it's just first with our ordinal, it is uh it will bounce through so if you're not sure which font would support it you can do what i did highlight it activate the uh piece and if you don't see anything change you can simply go through it now we have stylistic alternatives uh available as well but uh, this this is an interesting case and that's uh let's see if we can get it to show up the unfortunately windows 10 thinks it's smart and it's trying to do work for me, but it's actually not that smart. Okay, we'll turn on the stylistic alternative for uh, Mirrored Pro. Actually, I think uh, I can't quite tell if it did something or not. So one of these has the stylistic alternative and the other one does not. I'm going to move these out of the way using the move tool. 
because I'm going to do a big drop down in just a moment. I'm going to grab the type tool, highlight both of them, and let's take a look for a font that does, here's one, Consola. So you can see that when it has the stylistic alternative, the eye swoops down. When it does not, it's simply a blocky eye. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, yes, it does in fact have a couple of more tools available to us is the contextual alternative, which should have picked it up by default. Oops, but it did not. So that's interesting. And this one will also unlock our discretionary ligatures, which should figure them out according to when it would be appropriate to use. However, uh, I, I tend to be a stickler, and so I prefer not to uh, leave that on. I prefer to go through them and find a case when, when they uh, would, where I would like them. All right, uh, let's go ahead and do one more set here. And this will be the last of the uh, character panel and we can move on to the paragraph uh, panel but what I need to do is just pop it back into our fonts and I'm going to uh, here we go look right away and sure enough we have access to swash and you can see how it converts uh, this uh, serif are those extra little bits and pieces and swirls around it uh, it converts it from essentially a sans serif to more of a serif style. Now, uh, I find this interesting because this is Comic Sans, one of the most hated fonts in all of the universe. People tend to uh, gravitate towards it though because it's very close to Helvetica, which is one of the best fonts in the known universe. So uh, you'll, you'll get these arguments about whether or not something should be done. But if you want to do a kind of quick handwriting and you don't want people to go, oh, but that's Comic Sans, well, Photoshop's got you covered. You can activate the swash and now You'll go, well, I think it's Comic Sans, but unless you're really into typography, it, uh, it won't show up. So that leaves one more piece on here we uh, have not demonstrated, which is the tilting alternatives. Let's go ahead and grab a couple of these. And uh, let me again move over. We'll just put this here. And we'll look for a font that will cover that. Do, 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 do. Looking for a tilting alternative font. And I do really do love, in older versions of Photoshop, you wouldn't be able to do this. You would have to stop at each font in order to update the panel. And uh, truthfully, this is one of the, the biggest boons to uh, font users. I'm beginning to worry that I may not have a font that has a tilting alternative. Uh, on it. Let me see if I switch it to now we've only got oh, we don't even have italics All right, let's continue I <laughs> for some reason I keep pressing image. We'll just uh, circle around if I can't find it in the next couple We'll use some movie magic to uh, go in I'm suddenly becoming very nervous that I in fact do not have the font installed on this particular computer that will uh, demonstrate the previous one. So just a moment, movie magic. I do not have a font that supports that installed, uh, but I did want to show you this uh, last bit here. Uh, notice uh, if we do the standard lig ligature, we end up with the V and the Q spreading around. But without the standard ligature, and instead doing the discretionary ligature, it will change the spacing between things like Q, the C and the K, but it does not in fact change the TH and the Q. So they do do different things, I wanted to, to make that clear. Uh, and you may want it on, you may not want it on, depending on what you're trying to create. So I'm sorry that I can't uh, demonstrate the uh, tilting alternates with the uh, standard uh, set of fonts that I have available on this computer. So I will just bring up a website to show you. Uh, and a heads up, uh, while well, I said Windows thought it was uh, Windows 10 thought it was smart enough to change um, the pop-up, uh, I thought that was my on-screen keyboard popping around. Uh, I did not notice it's actually the alternate uh, stylistic alternates for uh, Photoshop's uh, fonts. If it detects one while the uh, while that is on, and uh, we should have it, I believe, uh, contextual alternative. Uh, it should pop up as you go through if it's available. Um, they also have tilting alternates, alternatives, and that should come up as well. Going in, here is a listing of alternate tilts, 
when they're happening. Uh, I simply don't have any fonts that cover it. But fortunately, uh, breathingcolor.com has uh, a nice little cover of that uh, on here, along with a number of uh, GIFs of people doing things. Uh, I, I don't know, but they have good screenshots, so we'll leave it at that. All right, so that's essentially, in the nutshell, uh, the character panel and uh, what you can do with the character panel. Uh, you also have the ability to change the types of text that's available. For example, if you wanted French characters, uh, you'd have it. If they have uh, Russian characters, they'd be available. Uh, you could get the things with umlauts. You can also in the flyout, uh, in the paragraph, and I believe over here, uh, oh yeah, you can bring up the stylistic alternatives over here, so that's nice. And just in the flyout if they if they exist so you can turn it on and off uh so it's in the paragraph you have the ability to uh switch between what direction things will be going and that sort of thing uh the characters uh, i'm mistaken i thought that you also had the ability to yes here we are i was not mistaken if the font allows it you have middle eastern features which will unlock certain additional abilities inside of the character panel these these fonts that i have uh do not have that uh available to them so we will not uh, see them uh, right away, but we'll be able to demonstrate in paragraph what that means. So let's move on to the paragraph panel in the next video.